everybody it's Sue from Sew so Spin Knit I'm good how are you uh, welcome back to another video I thought I would pop in and do a little catch up on my knitting I don't talk about my knitting enough I do a lot of knitting um, constantly knitting something it takes me a long time to finish things because I'm really really bad at starting something and putting it down and then getting distracted by shiny new fabulous things and doing that instead so I thought I would pull out a few things I have actually finished and not talked about and show them to you. So first one, I'll just insert some footage here of me doing some very bad modelling of the Spark Cardi by Andrea Mowry. Take me on a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance? Oh, I wish it was me Every night I, I made it a little bit longer than This is it here, by the way I made it a little bit longer than I think the recommended measurements in the pattern. Could have made another size up possibly, but eh, you know, it's fine. It's super warm and I think it's better for me if it's open because, you know, it gives a bit of ventilation. I get cold, but then I get hot, you know, menopause and all the stuff. So, um, yeah, it's it fits me how I would like it to fit is what I'm trying to say there um, it is I love it it was not a labor of love it just um, you know I picked it up put it down picked it up put it down when I was in the mood basically so probably was knitting on this cardi for or oh, I'm gonna say a year on and off picking it up and putting it down uh, so you know lots of sewing and other things in between what's to say about it it was a pleasure i loved it it was not difficult to do the i-cord bind off on the edge of the um shawl collar uh, and the button band which doesn't have buttonholes in it is just lovely i love how it finishes the garment makes it really professional um, I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can, here I've sat and bound my, so this is knit in the round and then steaked and um, I wasn't super neat at cutting the edges, I just went with the dressmaking scissors instead of one stitch at a time like knitters do, I was like ah this is fabric probably should have done it like a knitter does because it was a bit raggedy so uh, I basically bound the whole inside edge with this cream binding but I mean it looks nice so and it keeps everything neat and tidy so that's good um, so there was that I did the I should just pull this down I made the belt which I don't really need because it doesn't really like fold over but uh, I did actually really enjoy it and I did learn a new skill in doing it so this is double I think it's called double knitting so um, you end up with what essentially is a tube of knitting but you're just knitting uh, backwards and forwards across the um, I can't remember how many stitches I think it was 16 something like that anyway you're just knitting backwards and forwards across and it depends which stitch you pick up and knit as to which side of this tube you're actually knitting and it was super neat I thought anyway uh, new skill really enjoyed it so yeah that's my spark cardi what did I make it out of? I made, I I did do a swatch, I'll show you, I was very good, I swatched before I began and I swatched not in the round 
but I did um, set up the right way I think so yeah that's up the right way so I did a swatch to see how close to gauge I was and to see if the two yarns I wanted to use would work together and I think they work together so the cream wool you can see is Knit Picks um, Wool of the Andes Bare Wool in a DK weight and I used that with this um, gorgeous Noro Silk Garden that I bought when I was over in New South Wales visiting my son and daughter-in-law when they were living over there they're back now um, and it is color 373 if anyone is keen on the colors uh, and I think it worked really really well the uh, sample that Andrea Maori made I'm pretty sure was spin cycle uh, yarn so it's the the I, I spin I don't know fractal spinning I think it is with the two different colors sort of running together and it, you know you get sort of this graduated uh, effect which you, you know you get with Noro anyway um, now the you know they're two different fiber contents so Noro is silk, mohair and wool. So it's 45% silk, 45% mohair and only 10% wool. Excuse me. <coughs> and that was actually quite good because it... I don't know if I... I'm not sure if it's not super soft it feels a little bit plasticky if I'm honest no but uh, once you or silk garden sorry once you you block it it softens right up it's lovely and it just that mohair content causes it to really grip into each other the stitches really sort of grip so it's not felted but you know it's really nice you get an I think you get a nice stitch definition so yeah I was, I'm really happy with it and I'll be even happier when it's cold so I can wear it because you know I've been working on it on and off for quite some time so that's my spark cardi what else have I been working on I decided I needed to start sort of picking up a project and actually finishing it and in between that jingly keys shiny things I came across this little beauty we'll insert a picture the color block shawl now I have this thing going on in my head well this sort of theme of making at the moment where I'm really gravitated towards navy pinks whites blacks and so I decided to make this color block shawl using navy pinks, whites and blacks. I went off looking for, I thought, read the pattern, it's a shawl, it doesn't matter what your gauge is and it doesn't matter what yarn you use. If you follow the pattern you're just going to get a bigger or a smaller version of the pattern and I really liked it so I went for it. So the fabric, uh, the fabric the yarn that I used was Bellissimo's 100% Merino Extra Fine DK Weight wool. I'll try to block out my face so you can see that. So I bought some of this from the Blue Box in Bustleton. Did a road trip and I will be going down to Busso as we like to call it here in Western Australia. To visit a very good friend of mine in the school holidays for a day and I probably will call into the blue box and pick myself up a treat let's see not that I need a treat I have so much wool but you know how it goes so I picked up the yarn and then I had to panic buy some more because 
I initially purchased, let me show you, so I initially had these colours, so there's, hang on, can you see the, yeah, there you go. So I initially had the yellow, the navy, the grey and the black to colour block, but I wasn't sure about the yellow for me now I'm looking at it and thinking oh, in the viewfinder anyway I'm thinking that looks all right I have enough that I could possibly make a smaller shawl with what I've got left and I may do that I'll tell you why it would be a smaller shawl because this thing was expensive yes expensive so there's in the pattern there are, what are there, one, two, three, four, five, five colours and each of these balls of yarn, so the five colours, two balls per colour, $15 a ball, so that's $30 per colour, that's $150 and then when I picked up the navy initially, and obviously I, deci I decided that I didn't really, wasn't sure about the yellow or the mustard, so I panic ordered the pink instead, and white was the other colour that went with those. When I picked up the, the navy at the blue box, it's all down to me. I picked up two different navies and it wasn't until I got home and really looked closely at them that I thought they don't look the same and then I checked obviously the dye lot and the colour number and they were not the same and so then I had to order another one of whichever one and I couldn't decide which one so I ordered both and you know so the, the cost of this shawl just went up and up and up. It was a really, <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me, it was a very quick make for me because um, I basically worked on and off this shawl over the summer when I could deal with having it on my lap or I put the air conditioner on and did it when I really felt like knitting. Uh, I know, naughty, using up all of that energy unnecessarily but you know it was for my mental health that's what I tell myself so it's really easy it's a uh, garter stitch it's just knit 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 that's it it's just knit 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 and you don't really see what it looks like until you get to the end because it's a ton of stitches on you know a not too wide cord um I think it was keep saying um today I'm very sorry I think it was five millimeter needles might have been five and a half I genuinely can't remember and I have to say it really doesn't matter it's a shawl you go your own gauge whatever size needles you love to work with whatever size yarn you love to work with you can adapt this pattern to make as big or small a shawl as you want it's that easy it's real like I do really like it turned out I really like it it turned out huge like absolutely huge and I clearly have done something wrong because it's not blocking the way that it does in the pattern pictures so it's pretty hard to show but let's start here so we've got this there's the white triangle there in the middle and you've got the two lighter greys and it's sort of it's not really the exact shape you can see it's a little bit sort of rounded I think I'll tell you what I think the problem was in a sec I'll just show you the bottom of it see if I can just roll it up a bit and get that in can you see oh yeah you can see it so I totally love the colors I totally love 
the, the yarn, the softness. I totally love the pattern. It is, it's gorge, 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 gorge. The, I even enjoyed, some people don't apparently, but I even enjoyed doing the eye cord bind off because I think it just looks stunning on the edge of the um, shawl. Where I think I went wrong, I think you can see it. Can you see it there? Pretty sure you can. See this, uh, this strip here of the black border. I picked up too many stitches, I think. I followed the pattern, but I feel like it fanned it out and it needed to be come in a bit. So, you know, I got to a point where I thought that's what the problem is and I could see it, but I wasn't ripping back. This is this, I don't know, I feel like there's 20 million stitches in this thing. And it's fine. I'll show you how I I wore it to work the other day because it was very chilly and I got many many positive comments on it which was lovely. So I've been wearing it with a pair of trousers. I'll just go. Okay. So just crossing it over thusly and then tucking it into the back of my trousers because I don't want a big knot there and then you can see hopefully see if I can move over a bit you can see it down the back it you know it's just sort of falls down the back and a um, bit like a cape I guess a little bit um, outlanderish so so wearing it just like this, a bit outlander, a bit nannery, a bit, I don't know, but um, it's divine. It feels beautiful. I mean, it could have been um, the, the yarn itself is very splitty. Let me show you like this is, whoops, this has just been cut and nothing else like no one's you know, it's not been touched or used. It's just cut and sitting in the um, project bag. And can you see how split that end is? It's just started to split already. I'm not sure if you can really see that. Very split, it was very, very splitty, and there's spots where where I joined in the yarn, it's come undone, and I've had to, it's on the wrong side. There's some not so pretty joins. Where's one? I just sort of, I've just tried to stitch them up as best I can, anyway. You know, there's a few not so pretty joins there but that's that's life when you're knitting it's on the inside who's gonna know no one and not the people who see my work and enjoy it don't make these things so they just think it's amazing that somebody made it which is good which makes me feel nice okay my superpower so that's a couple of things that i've made just recently and I thought I'd just do a couple of whips. So I have one whip with me and then I have another whip I haven't started yet but I'll tell you about it. So I am currently knitting on the Tecumseh by Boiler Knits. Pretty sure it is. There's my pattern here somewhere go okay. that's the Tecumseh by Boiler Knits Knitworks just there um, I decided to turn it into a cardigan so I have a few different yarns here let me show you 
that I'm using. So for the body I'm using navy and it is Bendigo's 8 ply classic midnight. So this is Bendigo Woolen Mills. If you're in Australia, check them out. Well, even if you're not, wherever you are. Value for money. Amazing, amazing, amazing yarn. Nice, beautiful, feel it, wear it against your skin. 100% wool. It's not super wash, but it washes in the washing machine on a wool wash. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Definitely check it out it's their bamboo range um, is also stunning absolutely stunning definitely have a look their colors are great you can if you you can actually apply to have uh, sample cards sent to you and if you sign up to their newsletter Bendigo Woolen Mill will send you sample cards each time they bring out a new range or I get one quarterly in the mail. It's fantastic because you can see and feel the colours and decide what you want. So the main body is going to be the navy and then the little crosses. This is again, um, this is um, Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes, Bare Wool, I dyed this. This has been dyed with, what did I dye? This? I think this one is been dyed with onion skins or avocado. I actually think, think no, it's not onion skins. This is avocado. So, Actually, that's a lie. It's not avocado pips, it's beetroot. And when I washed, you would expect, you'd think that it would have come out a lot darker and it didn't. I just used beetroot skins. And once the mordant was set, I used citric acid. It came out a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. But it is a pale pink. And then I have some leftover drops um Nord pretty sure this is let me check I've got the band in here somewhere it is. no it's not it's drops Lima and the color is so it's drops Lima and the color is 5820 if anybody is interested in that so they're all uh, they're all what we call in Australia 8-ply, but the rest of the world calls it DK, double knit. So you have 4-ply or fingering and double knit, and we have 4-ply and 8-ply. Don't ask me why. There's not actually 4 or 8-plies in these yarns. It's just what they're called. I don't know why. Ask my mum. Anyway, she probably wouldn't know why. She'd be the same. She'd be like, I don't know. That's just what we call them. So, I had decided to do the Tecumseh or try it again. Because I did, have tried it. And whilst I love the pattern and everything, I did terrible knitting. Terrible knitting with it. So I wanted to have another go and do better knitting. And I still may or may not rip out the one that I did before. I should show you. I might show you next time. I might do a look at my terrible knits episode. Anywho, I've t decided to turn it into a cardigan. Now the Tecumseh is very tenty and it's a little bit too... Um, it's meant to be more like a swancho-y type fit. And so I'm raising up the um, arm style, the point that the arm that I will split for the sleeves in the Tecumseh and I'm going to not um, there aren't that many decreases once the bust is in but I might not actually do those bust decreases we'll see um, anyway I'm turning it into a cardigan so the way that I've done that is so this is it this is where we're at so far. I've just finished doing the first colour block 
pattern in it. So this is my this is the start of the round here with the orange uh, stitch marker and what I've done is knit round to the front in the pattern and then I've given myself I've got five stitches one side and seven the other don't ask me why it's just how it worked out uh, and in the middle I'm purling five stitches which is my steak so that's where my cardigan will get cut and then I'll have this sort of straight band down the uh, either side I don't know if I'm gonna I probably will just pick up and do a button band actually that's what I was gonna say I'll put in a zip but I'll probably just do a pick it up and do a button band so that's where I'm at with that I th think I possibly so if I put it up here I, I would say that in about one inch of knitting time so if I put this up I'll probably try it on I'll probably have about one inch more of knitting and then I'll split for the sleeve there and wherever I split for the sleeve I'm going to knit straight down from there because otherwise it just tents right out and it's not really what I was after so I'm just modifying as I go along um, I haven't written any notes really I probably should other people might be interested I have seen people turn the Tecumseh into a cardigan after they knit it as a jumper or a sweater and didn't like how um, A-line it was and they just cut it up the middle and added button bands and made it a cardigan I thought I would try and think a little bit more about it and see if I can you know work it out so that is where I'm at with the Tecumseh I am really enjoying it I am trying to teach myself I'm practicing all the time not to throw so I can't do this one like that my I just I can't do it without doing a full movement with my arm so at the moment I am practicing where I tension the yarn around my finger and I'm just picking up the stitch like this so it's just a tiny hand movement because um, I have seriously damaged both of my shoulders I've had to have the bone shaved off the collarbone and this collarbone it is not attached anywhere it's just free spinning and so it gets very inflamed and sore and if I'm constantly doing this it makes it worse so I'm currently one of the uh, benefits of the knitting that I've been doing in the round is to retrain myself to uh, knit like this and it's taking some time but you know I'm getting there I've got a couple of pet well that's a lie I've got one pair of socks on the go um, same thing I'm doing the same thing I'm trying to knit this way and in the process just retrain that muscle memory and I'm slowly getting there I'm starting to be able to do it in pearl as well which is really good I saw on YouTube the other day I saved it um, I can't remember if it was some Eastern European country name pearl stitch and it's pearl but it's done you know through the it's, it's done looking a little bit like a knit stitch and it turns out to be a pearl stitch I want to have a go at doing that and see if that works but that is where I'm at with the Tecumseh all right so the other project that I will be doing over the Easter break knitting project is this project it is called Sean's Gambia it's cardigan it's knit in a bulky weight 
Uh, I'm using Drops Yarn for it. Uh, I've ordered it. Hopefully it'll be here before Easter. All of the or shipping information says it will be. Fingers crossed it will be. Um, it's for Wayne. He's chosen the pattern or the cardigan and he's chosen the colours. So very similar to what's there. Going with a grey pardon me a grey, a cream and a beige. Slightly different um, tones. The grey is slightly more steely blue which he liked. The beige is probably a little bit more brown than what you could see in this picture. Uh, the cream is very similar. I've ordered them from the wool warehouse in the UK and I'm hoping that they'll get here on time. I, I think they will. And uh, yeah, it shouldn't take very long because it's bulky. It's done on six and eight millimeter needles, which means it should fly by fairly quickly. I'm really looking forward to it. I thought about um, modifying it to be in the round and then I decided to just go with it. So I'm just going to knit the colour work in pearl and knit rose and see what it looks like. Because I'm, you know, I grew up knitting flat. So knitting all the pieces flat and then seaming them together rather than knitting in the round. And I do think that you get a much nicer garment fit if you knit pieces flat and then seam them. Um, it's more enjoyable to knit in the round if purling's very slow for you, but I'm a slow knitter whatever I do. So either way is fine with me and I would like to make a piece that or a garment that is when I'm making it for someone else that they really love and will wear all the time. That beautiful jumper that I made for my son for his 30th birthday, I said bring it home and I'll wash it for you. Don't wash it. Put it in the wash. Felted it. It's probably big enough to fit our grandson now. So hoping that at least he will end up getting it. We'll see what happens. But yes, so that's my, um, that's my knitting at the moment. Um, love to know what you're knitting on, if you knit, or if you do some other yarn craft, let me know. I haven't done a lot of spinning lately, but when I do, I will share that too. Hope you enjoyed this little knitting natter, and I uh, will talk to you all again soon. Bye for now. Bye.